And I said, well, I was going to be a guest preacher, but I know they family now because I just feel like cutting up this morning. I know that. I just feel like cutting up. But Psalms 30 and 5, I promise you I won't be before you long. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting me. I'm so appreciative of this opportunity. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's all right. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Psalms 35. And the word of the Lord says, well, let's start at verse 4 so we can get a very understanding. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endure but in a moment. His favor is life. We've been may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Um, can you just look at your neighbor and say, We've been may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Real quick, if you help me preach, I won't be long, but I'll be strong. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, the topic for today is joy will, joy will, joy will. Look at somebody on the other side and just say, Joy will. Joy will. You may be seated. Joy will. I come from Greater Faith Apostolic Tabernacle in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know this song, but the song says, It belongs to God. It belongs to God. All the glory, the honor, the praises all day. It belongs. To, to God, it belongs to God, it belongs to God, all the glory, yeah. the honor, the praises all day, it belongs to, to God. I sing that song because I went through something recently, it's alright, you can give me a time alone. Um, I went through something recently where my father passed and I didn't know which way to turn. And I kept singing that song for all the glory and honor belongs to him. I went through a season of depression, but I have the testimony, saying to God now, that all the glory and all the honor belongs to the Lord. Look at your name and say, Joy will. We the man go for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God called the light day and the darkness and he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. That was Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. God not only creates the brightness of day, he also creates darkness of night, saints of God. Mm -hmm. So whatever appears like a night today is just before the break of dawn. Uh, don't give up and don't give in because morning is approaching. Yeah. Yeah. And to the upright there arises light in the darkness, saints of God. His, he is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. Psalms 112 and 4, light will surely prevail over darkness, for his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for life. We've been made go for night, but joy comes in the morning. The night is the period of darkness, saints of God, uh, between evening and morning. It is a time of rest or ending from daily activities. Uh, the night is the end of a day and the dawn of a new one. It is a time of darkness before daybreak. What, what is the night season, Mother God? What is the night season? It is a, a time of weeping and sorrow. The night season is a time of fear and insecurity. It is a dark place to be. Um, the night season is a time of trials and affliction. It is a time before breakthrough. The night season is a time of disappointment, frustration, and depression. Uh, it is a time you feel like giving up. The night season is a time we question the reality and the promises and the presence of God in our present situation. It is a time of anxiety. The night season is a time of hopelessness and confusion. I don't know about you, saying to God, but have you been in situations where you really don't know which way to turn? Have, have you ever been in a situation and you don't know which way to go? Have you ever been in something called the night season? Look at your neighbor and say, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. But before I can finish this text, can we just praise him real quick? Because God is making it well on our behalf. Can we give him praise because he's making it all well, all well. I'll be out of here, but my beloved St. Stephen's, my new family, just because yes. you're a godly person doesn't mean you're 
you're not going to have something called a night season. It doesn't necessarily mean you that you've done anything wrong or messed up in your Christian walk. Perhaps you're in the midst of a raging storm or fire or love of life, but God saying you will not be defeated. God's with you and He will help you. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, God is right there all the time. We have, we have something going on, mother, about these Christians today. My little generation, I grew up with my grandmother, so sometimes I don't, um, like, you know, label myself with this generation, but I truly am this generation. I'm young. But they have a problem here, um, organists, is that they don't know how to suffer. They don't know how to go come through their on, night season. Uh, there's a problem because they don't know how to get through. The first time, you know, you say something to them, now they talk about the church on Facebook. The first come time come you do something uh, to them, now they go on a rant and say they ain't coming to church no more. Then they start labeling this thing called church. Or I have a young church. I have a young church. And I get very confused. They be like, oh, I came out of church. Or I said, no, you didn't. I said, church her is what Jeremiah went through when people turned their backs on me. Uh, church her is what, what the people of God and the disciples went through. That, that's church her because the people that you love so closely, the people that you gave your all to, the people that you've been right there for, they messed around and turned their back at you. But look at your name and say, God is right there. God is right there. My grandma used to say, God can't use no jelly back soldier. They used to sing a song. They said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise to serve him till I Oh my God, I like y'all in here. Look at your neighbor and say, for God I live. And for God I'll die. So, so I will bless the Lord has given me counsel. I promise you I'm going to find my place. My heart also instructs me in the night season. These, these will be seasons filled with tears and despair. Yet they will not last. The season should surely come to pass. I remember Uncle Timothy down in Brooklyn sung a song, Trouble Don't Always. Uh, can we give God another praise? Uh, Cause trouble don't last. It don't last. It don't. It don't, it don't last. Uh. St. Stephen's, my family, sing to God. Uh, the night in the sense is not just an overnight. It's something we call a season. Uh, the Bible never told us that it was going to last at what we know, uh, but it is of a season. Uh, so we learn of this season and life is in seasons. Uh, we all go through seasons of life. Are you going through a difficult season now? Are you going through frustration now? It's all right because this is your last day going through it. Uh, because I come as a prophet today uh, to pull you into your neck. So and, and you can choose to be happy in this season or you can choose to be like other people and go through her. You can choose to be happy regardless of what's going on. Life is made up of valleys and mountains. And the mountaintop is a beautiful scene. But to get there, you will have to pass through the valley. In the valleys, you will have many trials, saints of God. In the valleys, many will, under, will misunderstand you. Some will criticize you, talk evil about you. Matter of fact, they'll even judge you unfairly. Isn't it so ironic that people are judging and don't even know you? Oh, Isn't it ironic that people have so much to say, but you ain't never had a conversation with me? But the valley is just a transit. The valley is just a beeline bus. The valley is just an MTA train. The valley is just a transit point. Whatever your situation you might be going through, right, is nothing but a transition. And it shall pass because it's season will end uh, and a better season will start. Uh, can you look at your name and say, neighbor, uh, this is my season called better. Uh, can you give God praise because uh, everybody under the sound of my voice uh, just enter into a season called better. Uh, look at your name and say, better. Whether it be in business and ministry, whether it be in your finances or career, God is with you, even in the darkest nights of your life. Tap the person next to you and help me prophesy and say, neighbor, I'm in my season of joy. Life may not have turned out the way you planned, but you can still be thankful. The night season should not be a time for us to murmur or complain or to be bitter with God. Place your life into his hands and refuse to be discouraged. Keep singing the hymns and praising and worshiping God even in your night hour. Remember my grandmother.
to sing a song like to the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. Oh yes, he saved. That was my grandmother's rendition. I can remember her singing songs like, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. You gotta keep singing songs like, oh, Glory to his name. I got another one. You got to sing songs like look and live. My brother live. Look to Jesus now and live. Because it's recorded in his word. It is only that you look and live. Look at your name and say live, 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 live. live, live. And I, I promise you, I promise you, I'm getting on out of here. But Thessalonians 5 and 18, we rejoice not because of our circumstances. We don't rejoice because they're perfect. We praise God because we know that in all things, he works for the good and for those who love him. We sing him because he's worthy of all the glory and honor and all of the praise. So I want to tell you, avoid the murmuring and complaining. This season shall pass. The night will soon be over. It may be the darkest you've ever seen, but you can't give up. God's working behind the scenes. Can we give God praise? Because He's working behind, behind, behind the scenes. What does that mean? He knows what you're going through, He sees what you're going through. You're about to see the light in the darkest night. Joy is coming. So I want you to continue to pray during this night season. Have faith in God and patiently wait for Him. Meditate on the scriptures. Hold on. Hold on. What is that so? It said, I'm holding on until God's unchanging hands. Many people changed on me. But God's been right there all the time. I promise you, Brother Organist, I'm going to come. But look at your name and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you may not be aware of it, but surely the Lord is in this place. The dark place, what is the dark place? But he himself went in a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and he said, it is enough. Now Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. So after great spiritual victories over the prophets of Baal and Mount Caramel, the man of prayer and the fire feared ran for his life. Elijah went away from Jezebel and fear drove him into the desert. And there in the desert, he prayed for death. And if you're in a dark place, I just want to let you know you're not alone. God is always with you and he has good plans for you. Jeremiah said, for I know, for no, uh, the thoughts that I think towards you uh, are thoughts of good and not of evil, uh, but it's to give you an expected end. Uh, so I want to tell you, St. Stephen, uh, it's time to live happily uh, ever after uh, because there's an expected end uh, on this church, uh, there's an expected end uh, on Pastor's life, uh, and there's an expected end uh, on the vision. Uh, so the dark place is a place of self pity uh, and of low self esteem. Uh, a place where there is no life. Depression is a dark place that feels suffocating and hard to breathe. Sadly, there are many women and men of God that are dwelling in the dark place of depression. Well, 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 how do you know? Well, Pastor Antonio, I know because I've been there before. I believe it was July 7th or 10th. My father went to be with the Lord and I didn't understand it. I didn't know why. I said, you're my pastor. You're my overseer. You've been everything to me. Why would you leave me here? And so that Wednesday, I went into my room and I closed the door. Didn't come out until the funeral. And then after the funeral, I went back into my room, locked the door. Didn't want to see nobody. Didn't want no light to shine. I told my grandma, I said, You got to go buy me them curtains and drop it off to my house. She said, Why is people looking in? I said, No, I just need them. I put my black curtains up. I was in something called depression. But I want to short this little story real quick. Because I know we got to go, but I feel the Lord 
is speaking to me already. But I was in depression, didn't know which way to turn. But God one day looked at me and he said, what are you laying there for? And I said, I don't want to talk to you. You took my love. You took the man who birthed me. You took everything that I loved. He said, no, no, no. Why are you still there? I said, what do you want from me? He said, go call this lady and prophesy. I told him, no, I'm not going to do it. And then two weeks later, I could not even sleep. And then he says, son, I said, I know that's not your spirit talking to me again. He said, yes, it is. And I said, Lord, what do you want from me? You took everything I had. He said, I want to explain something to you. I said, what in the world do you want to tell me? Is this a joke? So I started casting down imaginations. I said, I come against every unclean devil. He said, no, you can't come against me. He said, I'm the God of the earth. I'm the God of the heaven. So I sat there and looked and said, Lord, what do you want from me? He said, you got to understand season. And any relationship outside of your relationship with me is seasonal. He said, so I have the right to take whatever I want. He said, but you have no right not to give me the praise. You have no right not to pick up the microphone. You have no right. And so I got feisty. I said, no God. You took everything from me. I don't want to talk to you still. He said, okay. How I give you a scenario. He said, fill your pulse. And I said, what in the world? Let me feel it. He said, what is going on? And I said, Lord, I feel my pulse. He said, then get up where you're at. Open up the door and go preach. And so when I opened my church, the first message I preached was I found a pulse. Look at your neighbor. Do 
back. Women of God, how you doing? Can you just rush to the front real quick? Yeah, come on. Rush to the front real quick. Just a little bit more. I promise you don't go home real quick. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah.
you that this word was for you. He said, as I walked up there, he said, son, I wanted you to talk to her. And the saints of God just listened on in. He said to tell my servant that we've been made do it for just a night. But joy comes in the morning. Pastor Jordan, I'm sorry. Uh, it's alright. We're going to wait for you. Can you help me prophesy to her? Say your night season is over now. It's over now. Your mouth. 
He's about to bless you like you never told you shit.
to do with your financial sacrifice and that because as pastors, we got to sacrifice. But your sacrifice even of your love and emotions because when it's stuck, yes. you didn't drop down. Yes. I don't know why, Pastor. I see it as if he was walking and it stung, and you just pulled the knife right out and just said, all right, oh my God. I'm keep walking with yeah. When yeah. I'm not home, so I gotta watch what I say. Even when the people kind of picked up the knife and threw it back, yeah. and it hit you again, you kind of just pulled it out and said, okay. But the Lord, the God of Israel, Elder Hing says, I'm going to pay you for everything you went through. You're going to have double for your trust. I hear the Lord saying, you might going to have to make a little extra room in here because he's about to send people that are not like church. The world don't want. Yes. But I hear the Lord saying, Pastor Brown will love them until they get delivered. He'll love them until they'll smile again. I hear the Lord saying, I'm sending the rejected to you. Oh, I know I hear the spirit of the Lord speaking to me. You know you ought to be a little bit more happy for your pastor. the spirit of the living God. He said, as he sends people of the rejected to you, it's going to be one specific person. They won't look like they have a lot of money, but they don't have a piece of change. And he says, whatever you do, just love him. Just, and, and it's a man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, just love him. Because he's gonna bless your life. And he's gonna fund the ministry just for you. Now, this is the last phrase for me. If you ain't jealous and you happy for your pastor, can you just jump on your feet? You don't wanna dance.
Those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We love you. See you next week.